So functional dependency this topic uh, we have divided into two parts part 1 and part 2. So start with what is functional dependency. Now functional dependency for normalization functional dependency is very important. It play, plays a key role in a good database design. Now what is a functional dependency? The functional dependency require that the value for a certain set of attribute appears for another set of uniquely determines the another set of attribute the value for a certain set of attributes uniquely determine the value for another set of attributes means for example as we have seen the previous lecture so student has their role numbers and student has their names means for that particular role number there is a particular name another example the employee of a branch staff number and their particular name so that particular staff number is assigned to that particular name means that is uniquely identified that name or that person every student has their role numbers and these the students are recognized by their role numbers uniquely recognized by their role numbers prn numbers whatever we are using so that is a relation between these two attributes so Functional dependency is nothing but the constraint on the database design and it helpful for the good database design. Now what is the functional dependency? We are going to learn the mathematical definition of functional dependency. Let R be a relation schema with some number of attributes. Now alpha is the subset of R and beta is the subset of R means what alpha has some number of attributes from the relation while beta has some number of attributes from the relation not necessary it should be a single attribute means again we take the same example suppose the staff branch relation so alpha may be staff number name beta may be their position their salaries like this so alpha is the some number of attributes from r while beta are some number of attributes from r subset of r both are the subset of r then what is the functional dependency then it has alpha tends to beta how it is denoted with alpha tends to beta this is the standard way to define the function or denote the functional dependency alpha tends to beta holds on r if and only if for any relation r whenever any two tuples means two records of r1 t1 and t2 of r are agree on attribute alpha then they must agree on alpha attribute beta also means what if there are two tuples in a relation t1 and t2 have the same value for alpha then they should have same value for beta means t1 alpha is equal to t2 alpha tends to t1 beta is equal to t2 beta again i am repeating the functional dependency alpha tends to beta holds on relation r if and only if for any legal relation R, whenever any two tuples R1 and R2, T1 and T2 of R agree on attribute alpha, then they are also agree on attribute beta. Another uh, is that or uniquely alpha uniquely identify beta. Every tuple should be unique. Alpha uniquely identify beta. Now see it with the example, then it will be more clear. If we consider this example, so here there are two attributes. For example, if we consider this is the attribute A and this is the attribute B. Okay, this is the attribute A and this is the attribute B. Now, what we observe here that tuple T1 and T2 has the same value for alpha means A but tuple t1 and t2 has not the same value for b means t1 t2 is not equal to t1 t1 t2 this is equal here for alpha but not equal for beta means the functional dependency alpha tends to beta does not hold but if we observe in opposite way what is there in b all the values are unique all the values are unique means for uniquely identify one, 
5 you uniquely identify 1 while 7 uniquely identify 3 means we can say b tends to a. So, for this relation on this instance a tends to b does not hold but b tends to a holds. Again I am repeating t1 alpha a is equal to t2 a but t1 b is not equal to t2 b. That's why a tends to b does not hold but all the b's values are unique which uniquely identify every value of a. So, here b tends to a holds. See another example. Now, here in this case when we observe this relation a has 4 tuples, b has 4 tuples. If we observe this relation what is there? T1 a is equal to T2 a. What we observe here? T1 a is equal to T2 a. And T1 B is equal to T2 B. Correct? T1 A is equal to T2 A. T1 B is equal to T2 B. Then 2 uniquely identify 4. 3 uniquely identify 7. So, we can say that A tends to B is here. Why? Because T1 A is equal to T2 A. Similarly, T1 B is equal to T2 B. And these two uniquely identify 4 and these three uniquely identify 7 means we can say A tends to B. Now consider in opposite whether it uh, perform B tends to A. Now here T1 B is equal to T2 B is equal to T3 B means three tuples of B are equal. Whether these three tuples are equal? No, only two tuples are equal. So here B tends to A does not hold. A tends to B holds but B tends to A does not hold. Now we consider another example. In this example, there are two attributes A and C. When we consider this A and C, if we observe T1 A is equal to T2 A, similarly T1 C is equal to T2 C. Another one is that A2, this T3 A is equal to T4 A, while this one A is equal to this one. T3 C is equal to T4 C. Now, this A3 uniquely identify this C2. So, we can say here A tends to C holds. Why? Because T1 A is equal to T2 A. Similarly, T1 C is equal to T2 C. T3 A is equal to T4 A. Similarly, T3 C is equal to T4 C. And this last T5 uniquely identify this T5 C. Now, can we see in opposite way? Now, observe this in opposite way. So, here C1, C1 means T1, C is equal to T2, C. Similarly, T1, A is equal to T2, A. Now, these three tuples have the same value. That is T2 is equal to T3 is equal to T4, C. But here, these are not equal value. Means C tends to A does not hold on this relation. Only A tends to C holds. So, on this instance A, to, A tends to C holds but C tends to A does not hold. Now, see another example. We, if we observe this relation, there are four attributes A, B, C, D. Now, try to think on it. A tends to B, whether it holds T1 A is equal to T2 A, T1 B is equal to T2 B. No, there is not same value here. So, A tends to B does not hold. Whether A tends to C holds, C, T1 A is equal to T2 A, T1 C is equal to T2 C, T3 A is equal to T4 A, T3 C is equal to T4 C and this A3 is uniquely identify this one means A tends to C holds. Now opposite C tends to A holds, no. Why? Because these three are the same tuples but here these are not same values and that's why C tends to A does not hold. Similarly, A tends to B does not hold. Now, whether A tends to D holds, T1 A is equal to T2 A but T1 D is not equal to T2 D means A tends to D does not hold. Now, see opposite D tends to A, no, it not hold. So, here in this, which are satisfied 
So first A tends to C is satisfied that already we learn. C tends to E does not satisfied. Whether this D tends to B is satisfied? Yes. Why? Because this D1 uniquely identify this B1. Here these two tuples are same. Here these two tuples are same. D3 uniquely identify B3. D4 uniquely identify B3. And that's why D tends to B holds. But whether B tends to D holds? No. Why? Because these two tuples are same. But here these two tuples are not same. These two tuples are same here. But here these two tuples are not same. And that's why B tends to D does not hold. Now, as there are multiple attributes as I told in the relation that alpha is not necessary a single attribute. It may be a set of attributes. So, can we combine two attributes together? Yes, we can combine two attributes together. For example, A, B together. So, when we consider this A, B together, what we observe here, value is A1, B1, A1, B2. What value it becomes? A2, B2, A2, B3 and A3, B3. Now, when we observe these five values, what we observe when we consider these together, all are unique values. A1, B1, A1, B2, A2, B2, A2, B3 and A3, B3. All when we consider together, all are unique values. Means we can say AB tends to C and AB tends to D. AB uniquely identify C and AB uniquely identify D together. So, AB tends to C and AB tends to D. So, in this way we can consider them together. So, AB tends to D holds here and AB tends to C also holds here. But why this AB tends to C we are not going to consider, we are going to see it in the afterwards. So, these are some examples of functional dependencies. Now, when we consider the functional dependency, how we write it is alpha tends to beta. So, what is alpha? It is the left hand side LHS of the functional dependency. What is beta? It is the RHS of the functional dependency. So, left hand side of the functional dependency is known as determinant of the functional dependency. So, a, when we say that A tends to B, A is the determinant of this functional dependency. What it indicate that? B is functionally dependent on A. B is functionally dependent on A or A determines B. For example, your PRN number and your name. Your PRN number and your name. So, PRN number determines that you, it is your PRN number. Okay. Or your name is functionally dependent on your PRN number. PRN number is functionally determines name or name is dependent on the PRN number. So, in this way we can define out, we can read it. How we read the functional dependency. We consider the same example staff with staff number, staff name, position, salary and branch number. So, here simple functional dependency is shown as a staff number and position. Staff number determines position or position depends on the functionally depends on the staff number means for example this SL21 staff number work as a manager. Now if we consider this one whether the position tends to staff number is it possible? No. Why? Because there are multiple staff with the same position. There are multiple managers, multiple workers, multiple uh, assistant etc. So, position does not tends to staff number, but staff number tends to position. Why? Because staff number uniquely determine every position. What is the position of this particular staff? But the position does not determine the staff. Why? Because if we consider the position manager, there are two persons working as a manager. So, we cannot say this is a functional dependency. Simple staff number tends to position is the functional dependency. Now, functional dependency determines should have minimal number of attributes necessary to maintain the functional dependency with the attributes on the right hand side. 
okay means whatever the determinant lhs it should have a minimal number of attributes which shows or necessary to maintain the functional dependency with attributes on the right hand side now a tends to b is a full functional dependency if removal of any attribute from a results in the dependency no longer exists what is it is very important for example in the previous if i remove here the stop number what happens if i remove this stop number whether that functional dependency exists no why because the determinant is removed so that functional dependency is known as full functional dependency if we a remove any attribute from the left hand side if there are multiple attributes then it is a full functional dependency if there is a single attribute on the left hand side on the determinant then it is always the full functional dependency if there is a single attribute on lhs now what is functional partial functional dependency a tends to b is a partial dependency if there are some attributes extraneous attributes on the lhs or the determinant if we remove that extraneous attributes even if the functional dependency exists or hold means for example as i told for the staff number comma s name tends to branch number here if i remove the staff number what happens even if i remove the staff number branch number holds means this staff is working with this branch correct so even if i remove this staff number the functional dependency hold means this is an extraneous attribute and that's why this functional dependency is partial functional dependency but in this dependency if i remove this staff number the functional dependency no longer exists and that's why it is known as full functional dependency and that part we required in the next uh, topic of functional dependency and also in the normalization this full functional dependency is very much important now when we form the functional dependency what are the characteristics of this functional dependency so there are major three characteristics of functional dependency the one it should have one to one relation means what staff number tends to branch number staff number tends to s name means there is one to one relation this is the branch of this staff this is the name of this staff this is the position of this staff there is one to one relation second characteristic of functional dependency is the hold for all the time even if i add some new records even if i delete some new records even if i update some records the functional dependency hold for all the time we suppose i add some new staff in the branch the previous record there is no change in the functional dependency s name it is determined by the staff number or it is functionally depend on the staff number so that will never change means functional dependency hold for all the time even if there is a change in the data in the table and it must be a full functional dependency means what on the left hand side if we remove any attribute the functional dependency does not exist it should be minimal number of attributes on the left hand side or the determinant must be a full functional dependency so these are the main three characteristics of functional dependencies now simple definitions or some other type of functional as we have learned from fun full functional dependency there is another type of functional dependency that is transitive functional dependency if a tends to b and b tends to c then c transitively depend on a via b so what we call it as a a tends to c means there are two functional dependencies staff number tends to branch number and branch number tends to address then we can say staff number determines branch address via branch number so staff number tends to branch address then there are another two types of functional dependencies trivial functional dependency and non trivial functional dependency so trivial functional dependency means what a tends to b is trivial if b is a subset of a for example a staff number tends comma s name tends to s name so s name is the what is it is it is subset of determinant so that is trivial and non trivial means b is not a subset of a means staff number tends to s name s name is not the subset of determinant so that is trivial functional dependency
Now, how to identify functional dependencies? Simple, if the meaning of each attribute and the relationship between the attribute is well understood, known, then it is easy to find out the functional dependency as this example. We know that this is a staff number, this is a yes name of the staff, this is the position, salary, branch number, address. Means we can say that if it is a uh, primary key as a staff number, then all the attributes are depends on this primary key. Staff number tends to staff name, position, salary. Or branch number for particular branch, if we observe here, there is a particular address. So, another functional dependency that we can determine is branch number tends to address. Branch address tends to branch number. Branch number position, that particular branch, if the position is manager, then that particular salary is there. Branch address, comma, position tends to salary. For this instance, we can say these are some functional dependencies. Similarly, second way is that if we do not know anything about the particular relation, we do not know documentation or anything, it is incomplete, then how to identify? So, depending upon the given instance, we need to identify the functional dependencies that we learn in the previous examples. In that case, A, B, C, D is there. We do not know what is A, what is B, what is C. The same example is shown here. It is a relation with five attribute A, B, C, D, E. Now, looking at this instant only, we need to identify the functional dependency. So, simply when we look this particular instance with the help of definition of functional dependency, we can find out these four functional dependency. What is this four functional dependency? A tends to C. C tends to A, B tends to D and A, B together it tends to E or it determines E. So, for this instance only, if we add the new uh, tuples here, the functional dependencies may change. So, as we do not know anything about the relation, we need to identify the functional dependencies depending upon the particular instance only. Now, in this case, A, B tends to C. Is this functional dependency? Yes, it is there, but it is a partial functional dependency. Why? Because if I remove this B from this functional dependency, A tends to C still holds. Correct? And that is why it is a partial functional dependency, which is we are going to use in the second normal form. So, this is a partial functional dependency. If we remove the B, then the functional dependency still exists, means B is an extraneous attribute. AB tends to D again partial. If I remove this A here, then B tends to D already holds. Means A is an extraneous attribute in this functional dependency. It is not a full functional dependency, but these four are full functional dependencies, while these two are partial functional dependencies. So, next we are going to learn the functional dependency in detail or as a second part, we are again going to learn the functional dependency.